Hello everyone, welcome to Bumblebee Crafts. So I'm here today with a little bonus video and a preview of a, a new little mini series that's going to be coming up um, starting on Wednesday and it's called Vintage Books into Journaling Fodder. So as the name suggests we've got our vintage books and I want to turn them into lots of different ideas for ephemera, um, how we can use them with pages, maybe even some will lend themselves to fussy cutting, all sorts of things. So it's not a new series um, out there, there's loads of people on YouTube, especially for Edith Holden book page ephemera and stuff. There's a lot. I, I had a quick little search before I came on here, um, and there's a lot of um, inspiration out there. So, some of them I will be taking from those. So, if I mention them um, when I come to do their video, I will mention them in the comments below so that they can get the recognition um, for inspiring me. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to I want to do cut into them. You probably see my craft haul video a few weeks back where I got a couple of um, books um, from the the lovely Kay um, on Etsy, Kay's Vintage Ephemera. Um, I'll leave her links um, below and I'll leave a link to that craft haul video as well. Um, but it, when I got those, I was like, right, I've definitely got to cut into my vintage books now. I have a tendency to hoard them. I um, probably shouldn't admit that on camera, but I do. I just like this Edith Holden. This book is my one and only copy I've ever had of Edith Holden and I love it. It is beautiful. Um, I love seeing people use it in their journals and create ephemera from it and all of that and would love to do it myself but I have yet to bring myself to cut into this and it's like it's like I have an Edith Holden book yay and it just sits on the shelf and does nothing so it's like not really giving me as much more joy as it can give me other than that I own one <laughs> so it's like come on you need to push you need to cut into it you need to use them so with the books that I've got recently and the Edith Holden and a couple of other older books that I've got here that's what the series is all going to be about creating lots of different types of ephemera coming up with things now the series was um, should have enough videos to run for this month of June so there'll be four parts um, this month and then I thought it's something that I can dip into um, as and when we come up with some more ideas or I'm inspired by somebody to create something different with a book page um, but initially um, it's going to be a four parts to this and then more parts as time goes by <clears throat> excuse me so yeah I thought what I'd do in this little preview of the series of what's to come up is to actually show you flip through some of the books um, just so that in case you were interested you know if, if you wanted to look for this book in your local charity shop or even perhaps on eBay or something if you really like the look of it um, I'm not going to do the Edith Holden one there are lots of people on YouTube that have already done flip throughs of Edith Holden um, books and to be honest if you are a seasoned crafter you've probably already um, used Edith Holden yourself if you've been lucky enough to get hold of one or two copies so I'm not going to um, flip through that but I will flip through the others um, but also it's a part bit of um, posterity for me so that I can look back and say oh I did have an Edith Holden book once <laughs> in case I can never get another one I, I suppose because of my health issues I'm pretty much housebound most of the time um, it's very rarely that I can actually get out other than to doctor's appointments um, so I don't get to go to charity shops much at all um, buying books on um, Etsy um, is my only really option um, that I have um, people that sell vintage stuff on there and I know I could get them far cheaper if I went on um, to charity shops but I just I mean we have plenty in my town there seem to be loads of them but I don't physically or I'm not physically able to get into town unless hubby takes me um, and we would need to use my wheelchair and push me around so I'm very limited to what books I can have which is probably why I hoard them so anyway 
let's get into having a look at some of the books. So first things first, as I said, I put the Edith Holden one to the side. I'm not going to show you this. I've already cut this one or ripped this part out and then started taking some of the book pages um, out of it um, to use. So I... Um, that's something that we can use as well. We can make some book pages from that. Um, again, with this one, this one has already been cut into and I just literally knife down there, cut that spine off, knife the other side. Didn't really give much thought at the time because I've had this for quite a number of years as to whether I was going to use the spine or the book cover or anything like that for future use. However, Tracy Fox recently had a um, video, I think it might be a month or two ago now, but she had a video um, of um, showing us all the tips and tricks that she uses to cut into books and how to do them. So I've rewatched that video ahead, ready for my um, first video on Wednesday. Um, so that I can have a better idea um, of how to be just that little bit more careful with some of the books. Um, but this one, A Garden of Roses, um, that it comes in a set by the looks because you've, if you look at the spine on that one, it's very similar. Um, although that's a Reader's Digest one. But yeah, there are other books in this series, but I only got the rose one. I would wish I hadn't and as you can see I've used pages from it and to be honest I usually because they're so big I tend to fold them in half and that's a page in my journal um, with this particular book so that's that one Let's just make a pile to the side of me this one um, a big reader's digest book again I didn't to give it much thought I just ripped into that and cut it up but I haven't really used much in this book um, of things like this would probably want fussy cutting out um, rather than the, the um, book page in itself. Um, this looks like a Maybug, that does. So there's, there's some stuff in there. Now, this book here is a much newer book, um, as you can see. I mean, it's got a lovely cover. And lovely cover to use but it's new the pages are shiny um and everything i got it in a charity shop but they've got some lovely images like that on there so um i thought we um we would cut into this one as well and we'd have a look at this uh, let's see that's nice that in itself would make a nice little bit of ephemera um, just cut these up would make some really nice images and then the rest of the pages um, could be used for other things like bases for tags and stuff like that that that's really nice that would be nice sort of kind of given a little fussy cut edge to So yeah, I just flipped through quickly in the charity shop and see these wonderful images and just thought, oh, they would make nice little ephemera and then just never did anything with it because that was, I mean, I've had this book probably four or five years now. <laughs> so it shows you that's how long it's been since I've been to a charity shop. Again, another little square piece of um, um, little fussy cut that would work. So that's this book here, which is Choose or choose consider england i like the cover i do like that going all the way around that's nice and then obviously these two books that i got um from Kay's vintage and i've also got this book now this one came from the vintage craft cave she's on etsy she does vintage sales on etsy and i love this book um, again i've had it probably for a couple of years but just not used it and it's got lovely big writing. That would make some wonderful um, ephemera pieces. So if we skip through some of the writing and get to the main bit. Yeah, that's just writing. I mean, look at that, that lovely, lovely image there. Oh, you could do all sorts of things with that. But this is how it's laid out. 
look at that that is just going to be so perfect for either little journaling cards um, or you could um, make a like a nice tool tag and still keep this information on there if you did it like you made some pockets so that this was one side that was the other side I just thought it was wonderful how it was all laid out and it's like this all the way through for all the different flowers and then you get um, like a little, each section has one of these page, um, lovely pages, illustrated pages on there. It's just so, so lovely. Look at that. I mean, you could fussy cut some of these as well. I thought, I thought about that because I thought, well, I don't want to do the entire book as um, tags um, from them. But uh, something maybe a bit bigger like this um, musk mallow. Is that in camera? Yeah, it's in camera. You know, I could fussy cut around that, um, that sort of thing. And then those. Yeah, I think there's lots of possibilities. Lots of possibilities with this book. So this is going to be one of the ones that we're going to cut into that. I mean, look at that. It'd be perfect. A nice solid shape. Make a lovely fussy cut. What's the front page of uh, that section? Water and water side. Nice. I can just see that coloured in in some pens and some pencils or maybe even some watercolour. <coughs> Maybe that's something that we could do with one of those, bring in some mixed media elements. That would be quite nice on there, wouldn't it? But yeah, that's absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely book. So that's one that we're going to do, and that's the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Wildflowers. Um, it's a Chancellor Press one. There we go, if anybody wants to... Uh, find this particular book it's a big thick book very heavy okay so that's that one so these were the two of my most recent purchases let's just pull all the bits out that I feel from the order to one side and I've got to show you again this look at that isn't that absolutely gorgeous it's in really really good condition um, as well so I definitely need to take great care when I do this one because I want to reuse this um, I don't know whether I'm going to use it as an actual journal and do something with it or um, a lap book or something like that I'm not sure yet um, but the pages are fibrous kind of paper um, so it's really really nice and you've got these pages that have a whole page like that I think it would be probably quite difficult because they a lot overlap to do some fussy cutting for these because I think they're all, yeah, they're all like this. So probably not so much fussy cutting. But if you've got um, a little book page tag um, from here or you want to fold it up and create a little folio, I think these pages are going to be wonderful for that. So, yeah. It's lovely. Look at that. And it goes by the season. So this is February and April. Ones that you're likely to see in the garden and hedgerows and um, wildflowers. Well, it says garden flowers, but uh, yeah. Into March with the daffodils. It's just absolutely the magnolia. Considering we chopped down the magnolia this year, um, we still got a good lot of um, flowers from it before we, we cut her down in the garden. But she's just so, so big. So big. She's wonderful. I love her. But she needed to be trimmed. April and June. Look at those. Yeah, so it's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love um, pansies and violas. 
little violets under the our magnolia tree in the front garden um there's wild violets that have just all popped up all around dotted around and i just love them they are absolutely beautiful they're just like happy faces smiling at you they are so that definitely i think I might even cut that like so, just sort of do a little border edge and that would make a lovely front cover on a journal. How big is it compared to a normal A4? Oh, not too bad because of the journal itself is usually this side. So time I do a little bit of fussy cutting around there, a little ripping around and inking that up. Maybe layer it up with a little bit of lace or something behind it. That is definitely going to be a um, journal topper. And in fact, I'm going to, so that I don't forget, because I have a brain like a sieve at times. Um, journal, cover, topper. And I'm just going to do myself a little picture like this all around there so that I know so that when I come to it I'll be looking at it thinking what on earth was I drawing there <laughs> but no that's definitely what I want to do with that one so yeah that's the what have we got for the for the winter months oh it's August and September oh okay here we go I was intrigued to look and see at the um, winter uh, as I thought they're those lovely plants that dry really crisp on um, honesty I do like them <coughs> excuse me I mean look at that wouldn't that make a lovely autumn one the same and the berries and them little crocuses crocuses aren't out September and October oh, I suppose because you'd plant them I bet Plant, yeah, plant them for flowering. Oh, there's some wonderful, wonderful images. So, yeah, there we go. That's that book. The Illustrated Book of Garden Flowers and B. E. Nicholson. Where does it have an ISBN? Oh, it hasn't got a barcode. The ISBN is there. And it looks like they do the illustrated book of wildflowers, book of flowerless plants, book of trees, book of birds and book of insects. Ooh, I might have to look out to see if I can get this, see if I can find those because I love this book. Mm, there we go. And this is the other one that I got, Flowers of the Countryside. And again... It has a gorgeous front cover. Look at that. So it's, I believe it's slightly bigger. Yeah, it's much bigger than a, um, the J, um, usual size journal one in it. So I think this one being slightly bigger um, will probably want to turn into like a flip out book or something. Um, like is it lap books? Um but uh, this one is a lovely, lovely book. The pages are shinier than um, that book. Um, they've got much more of a, almost like a, a coating to them. They're not fully glossy, but they're not um, fibrous either. So it's a much newer book um, than some of those vintage ones. But oh, look at that. Oh, that would be wonderful on an autumn um, journal. So there, we've just got some writing. So I like how that is. That's really, really nice. That kind of like would edge a page really nicely. Just took you through the... Oh, look at that one. Oh, the pinks and the purples. They're my colours. I love that. They're my favourite. Fox clubs. I think there's quite a few pages like that as well. Look, there's another one there. That's really nice. Oh, look at that. That's a lovely, lovely, lovely page. Oh, can you imagine that as a really nice tall tag or a belly band? Yeah, now I know why I bought this book. 
there's just so many possibilities in here oh it's a little caterpillar yeah so many possibilities i mean even some of these could be fussy cut out they're small and um enough with enough gap all the berries ah with the butterflies that's lovely imagine that on the front of a journaling card we had one of those in our garden lime hawk moth it was quite a few weekends ago now because to be honest the latter half of um, may has been horrendous weather um it was in the beginning half when we had some really nice warm sunny weather and um it was up on our wall um on the back of the house and had come down the garden and up back up towards the house it's just like <gasps> Look at that stunning, stunning butterfly or moth. It was beautiful, much more than that picture. I mean, that picture looks lovely, but yeah, it was just a gorgeous, gorgeous moth to see. Um, but we've not got any lime trees around here. Um, so I don't quite know where it's come from, but it obviously liked our garden and overwintered in the garden. So that was a, a good thing. I do like to encourage as much bugs and wildlife and everything into the garden. Oh, look at that one. That's lovely. That would make some nice little pockets with that, wouldn't it? So there's lots of plain pages for us to just use in general for um, tag bases and things like that. But there is also a good number of... Um, pages look at those orchids the lovely bee orchid the wild ones yeah there's also a lot of nice um, bits of ephemera to use as well ah we get those in the garden rose bay willow herb ah so we get those rose bay they can anton calls them weeds my hubby calls them weeds i don't they are beautiful wildflowers <laughs> i'm more than happy to have weeds as most people would know them growing in my garden because the amount of wildlife that that attracts is amazing look at that i love the old-fashioned dog roses because they're just perfect for insects and bees Oh, and the poppies. Oh, I like how that is with this um, sketched one behind it. That's really nice. I, that is going to... Oh, I'd probably have to maybe chop it off there to put it as a page in the journal. But even so, if you did that, you, you could still use that for something. Look at that. So, yes, this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful book. Absolutely love it. Yeah, these little scenes are nice. I've got some shells and stuff. I wonder if they would go nicely with... Um, I still haven't yet done my ocean-themed journals, um, but I know some of them are like more beachy kind, and with the shells, they would think they would be really quite nice. It's like that one where you've got the sea coming in. That's nice. Oh, some old photos there. Oh, they would be really quite nice, wouldn't they? Cut them out individually as bits of ephemera. Stick them on. I think Tracy Fox has got a kit where um, you can make your own um, faux slides, um, photo slides. wonder how that would fit in if she gives you the background pieces. Oh, I like those. That's an idea. And someone's handwritten sketch and drawings. That's nice. I like that. Oh, look at that page. I've not seen any of... Have we got any other coloured pages? No. We haven't got any other coloured pages in here. No. How, how strange. That's the only coloured page. Perhaps it's because it needed to be the white. And But that's lovely, isn't it? I do like that. I know it's only bindweed. And that I do call a weed. That is a, a nuisance um, in the garden. 
I don't mind it if it's scrabbling through a little hedge. That's fine because it's all part of nature. You know, there are bugs and insects that go to it and everything. So, but it's when it comes out into your beds and your borders of your garden. <laughs> now that one is a weed. Oh, that's lovely. That is that image. Okay, so yeah, there we go. That's that one. The flowers of the countryside. Where's the ISBN? Oh, again, it's an older one. So it's just a number down the bottom there. So there we go. That's a quick flip through of my books that we're going to be using and cutting up. And just a little insight as to what we're going to be doing um, for our next um, for the next month with a little mini series on Wednesdays. Um, so if you want to follow along, do subscribe and click the notification, the little bell um, to let you know when my videos go out. Um, and I will see you on Wednesday when we when we are going to be brave. I'm going to be very, very brave and cut into the books. So until then. Happy crafting. Take care, everyone. Bye.